what is going on guys we are back at it again with another video today i'm going to be showing you how you can fake handheld movements in your videos using only premiere pro so after posting last week's video i got a lot of good feedback on it and the number one question that i got was who helped me film the video the crazy part about it is that i actually filmed it all by myself yes i filmed myself by myself does that make any sense all i had was my camera a prop camera and a tripod so that's why today i'm going to be showing you how i got my footage to go from this to this i didn't get any help when shooting that video however i did add some effects to the footage to make it seem like someone was actually filming me it's a real simple and easy technique that i learned a couple weeks ago it's simple yet effective in a way i feel like it kind of gives it like a raw feel to your video i felt like it would be a little too cheesy if i just had a steady shot with no motion it probably lacks like that personal feel to the video i don't know maybe i'm looking a little too into it but without further ado let's get started so when it comes to this effect we're gonna try to make our clip go from this steady shot right here and make it look like there's motion like someone's holding the camera we're trying to fake it because we literally just shot this on a tripod i didn't have anyone else with me that could zoom in or hold the camera so i had to film myself and we're gonna try to get this effect going and it's actually a lot easier than you might think all that you have to do for this effect is download a free plugin so what you're gonna want to go ahead and do is open up your browser and go to signcom.net, not sign.com. I made that mistake and I couldn't find it for some odd reason. <laughs> Make sure that it's signcom.net and you're gonna look up real handheld camera movement presets for Premiere Pro. And it's gonna provide you with eight different presets and what I like about it is that it's a free download. It says right here that they offer a commercial version for $9, but please, you don't have to pay the $9. Just make sure you get the free version. That's all you need. After you go ahead and download it, go to Premiere Pro, go to the effects tab and look at the top right corner for these three little lines and go to import presets. After you import them, they're gonna pop up here. I didn't import mine again because I already have them. Go ahead and open up the presets folder and you're gonna see them right here. They're gonna be fake handheld movement folder. So after you open this folder up, it's gonna show you eight different presets. In reality, it's four different versions, but it's eight different versions. Does that make any sense? So the reason that I say that there's four is because there's a normal, there's a super telephoto, a telephoto and a wide. And this kind of comes down to the clips and like how you shot your clips. And the reason that there's eight is because they offer two different varieties, but they have an extreme motion and a smooth motion for every different clip style. So it's up to you which one you want to use if you want to switch it up. I kind of just stuck to the normal version and I stuck to the smooth motion. I didn't really do the extreme motion because the extreme motion is crazy and I'll show you right now. But like I said, we're going to get this clip from looking kind of boring and dull. And all we're going to do is go ahead and drop one of these effects on it. And let's just start off by showing you the extreme motion. The extreme motion literally makes it seem like whoever's holding your camera doesn't know how to hold a camera. Like if you have like a freaking toddler holding your camera and they can't stay still compared to the real version like it's a uh, it's kind of night and day difference this one's all over the place like it's a little too crazy for me but if you're into it then by all means go ahead and put it on your clips i'm not gonna judge you it's whatever so let's go ahead and put the smooth motion on after you put the smooth motion on you see that it's very subtle pay attention to this top line and my head and you kind of see the difference on how it's kind of moving and stuff but compared to the real clip you see that there's a zoom in in there so I usually do that whenever it comes to my B-roll clips. I usually like to zoom in and zoom out. It's kind of like a cheesy thing. Some people really don't like it, but I mean, I really enjoy it. I feel like it sells the effect even more. So when it comes to zooming in, all you're gonna have to do is go ahead and click on your clip, go up here to the motion, and put a keyframe for position and scale. And after you do that, you're gonna wanna drag your marker all the way to the end. Once it's at the end, go ahead and put the number that you want to zoom in to be. So I usually stick in between 130 and 125. I kinda just stick to that five range, I guess, if that makes any sense. Right now it's at 100%, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it. And let's say I wanna put it at 130. So it's gonna zoom into 130, but as you can see, it cut off my head. So that's the reason for the position keyframe. You're gonna to wanna to change kind of, it's like the X and Y axis. You're gonna to wanna to change where your clip kind of ends up. So for this, I'm just gonna bring it up just a little bit right there. That way my head is still in frame. And then when you play it back, you see that my head stays in frame the whole time. I don't get cut off, but there's a zoom effect in it. And it's really that simple. All you're doing is dragging a preset onto your clip, doing a couple keyframes with the scale and the position, and you have your effect. And it's literally that easy. It's nothing too crazy. However, something that I do wanna stress is that whenever it comes to position, please make sure that you have a keyframe in the beginning. If you don't have a keyframe in the beginning, it's gonna show 
this little black line and it's gonna look dumb because when it comes down to it it only picks up the keyframe at the end so it's gonna like in a way move up a little bit by itself and you don't want that so please make sure there's a keyframe in the beginning and make sure that it's at the starting level that way it kind of just fixes itself as it goes along and another thing if you want to do this without the preset which i don't know why you would because it's going to take forever all you have to do is put a transform effect onto your clip and then you're going to have to keyframe all these positions and it's going to take forever and i'm pretty sure you don't have the patience for it so go ahead and just download this plugin use the presets no one's going to judge you it's fine so let's go ahead and do it on a different clip. And the funny thing about this clip is that it's actually handheld. So I'm faking handheld movements on a handheld clip, but it's kind of still the reason being is because I have IBIS on an EOS R. So it has in body image stabilization. So it's kind of, it kind of does the job in a way, um, but I still wanted more motion in the clip. So for this one, again, I think I ended up using the telephoto. I didn't use the extreme motion because the extreme motion looks like this and you're all over the place. You know, you're all freaking out. If for some reason, your cameraman just sucks. You don't want that. So take that off and just add the smooth motion to it and you get a nice subtle effect to it, right? It's moving. But for this one, I wanted to switch it up and I wanted to zoom out. So what you wanna do is go ahead, like I said previously, go to position and scale, add a keyframe in the beginning. Since we're zooming out, we're gonna start at a higher capacity than 100. So let's do 125 for this one. And I'm not really gonna mess with the position cause I like where it's at right now. And we're gonna drag it all the way at the end. Once we're at the end, let's scale it back to 105. And as you can see, this is no longer in the middle, but it's fine. I mean, it comes down to whatever you want. If you wanna move the position, you can. Let's say you wanna move it a little to the right, or if you wanna move it more to the left, let's, have, let's say we wanna keep it in the middle. And then you go and that's your clip. You zoom out. Like if you're zooming out while you were recording, but it's really not like that because you did it in post. And it's as simple as that. It's really such an easy technique that I feel like a lot of people don't know. And it's a real subtle effect. And I feel like it really gets the job done and it conveys the message or feeling that you want whenever you're recording a specific video. Of course, you can be using this effect on every clip, but using it when it's needed, I think it works great. But that's going to be it for this little tutorial. So let's turn around and finish off this video. And that's pretty much it, guys. It's really not that hard. And the cool thing about it is that it's a free plugin and it's simply drag and drop onto your footage and you get the effect. And what I liked about this technique is that you don't have to be this crazy skilled Premiere Pro user. Anyone can do the effect. It's literally that easy. And of course, use this effect in moderation and only when it's needed. Using it when it comes down to sit down videos or interviews might not be the best option and a quick disclaimer this plugin is only for premiere pro users i believe final cut has one but it has to be paid for so please take that into consideration i'll leave the link to the plugin down below i hope y'all learned something and i hope y'all try it out but like always that's gonna be it for this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe see y'all next week peace